Hey everyone, just recently a new model was released that a lot of people are calling a competitor to Midjourney, and I was able to test it a little bit and I gotta say, I'm very impressed with the results. It didn't take much to get good results. Unlike SD3 when I was first testing it, if you remember on that video, I was getting some pretty bad results mixed with some decent other results. But uh, yeah, so Black Forest Labs just released a new model called flux and we're going to talk about how to use it in comfy ui and how to use it in other ways outside of comfy ui so you can test it out and try it for yourself everybody's loving it right now so i think that you guys are going to really like this one too and the black forest team consists of several people who have worked on models like stable diffusion excel and stable video diffusion among other things. And they made three variants of this model that they released to the public. And there's Flux.1 Pro, Flux.1 Dev, and Flux.1 Schnell. And according to this chart, it seems like Pro is the best and Dev is the middle and Schnell is the lowest in creative capabilities. I am not going to act like I know the legalities of how these have to be used because to me, it's not 100% clear. And I know that with SD3, there was a lot of issues with people not understanding what was allowed to use commercially and what wasn't. I I'm pretty certain that Schnell, this one, is you can use it commercially for personal use for whatever. When I come here to the hug and face and I come down here where it says key features, it says release under the Apache 2.0 license. The model can be used for personal, scientific and commercial purposes. When I check with ChatGPT about Apache, uh, 2.0 license it allows for free use including commercial use this means you can modify and distribute software license under the Apache 2.0 license for commercial purposes without paying any fees or royalties i am not 100 percent sure but that's my understanding but then the dev version i believe that it's it says here non-commercial applications and i think this one uh, you cannot use it for commercial purposes and i don't know if you have to pay a fee or not uh, if you want to use it for commercial purposes all i can say right now is that we can play around with it and i just hope with time they can explain this a little more because i don't want to give you the wrong information so if you know the right information you know definitely put it in the comments so that everyone else here can be informed of that and then there's pro which is an api and you can access this version through like this website here replicate uh, you come in here you put in your prompts you don't have to install anything it's just on your browser so you put on your prompts you put all your settings and then you run it as you can see here it says flux pro and then you can also go to file.ai and do it in here as well so you have those options if you don't want to do it through comfy but we are going to go into comfy so that i can show you how to use it in there and what is it that you're going to need to install it into comfy so Let's get into that. Uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can have access to this page right here and also to this official Black Forest Labs page as well. It says here, if you don't have the T5XXL FP16 model, you can download it right here and it tells you where to put it. So if we just open this link right here and it tells us to download this model right here. So you download it. It says to download it into your Comfy UI, models, and then clip folder. And this is where I have it in right here. And then it also says here, if you can use this model right here, the FP8 um, instead for lower memory usage, but the FP16 one is recommended if you have more than 32 gigabytes. So just be aware of that. Uh, you have to download this VAE. So you come into here, you just download it to your computer, and then we're gonna store this one wherever you install your VAEs. If you used Comfy UI before, you know, where to find that if not it tells you here the tips for if you're running out of memory you can set the weight d type and the low diffusion model node to fb8 which will lower the memory usage by half but might reduce quality a bit so here are some tips for you if you have low memory and then here in the flux dev if we want to download this one you can download it right here just this open this window and we just got to go to files and versions and we're going to download this file right here flux one dev sft and it's a big file it's a 23.8 gigabyte file. So make sure you have enough space for that. And what you want to save that is in your comfy UI models. And then you come here to where it says U net, and then you're going to save it in here. And you can do the exact same thing for the Schnell model. So pretty much that will be it. And for the workflow, you can just uh, right click this image and save image as save it wherever you want. And then we, you can load it into comfy UI. Um, just make sure that you come here to managers and you update everything. You know, if there is anything missing, just go to uh, install missing custom nodes and then you should be 
set to go. If you, if there's anything missing, then it's going to tell you here, like if you press R, it's going to show like, oh, something is missing, but you can leave the settings as is. And don't forget, if you're running out of memory, here's the tip right here and the load diffusion model. And then you can change it right here um, to FB8 if you're having out of memory issues. Okay, so I'm going to put default for now. So for the dev version, it tells you to put 20 steps. I believe if you have the Chanel version, it uh, it's only it only needs four steps for that one. That's really cool. But uh, we're going to be messing around with this one since it's supposed to be a better version. Let's just put something that's a little bit more intricate. So I'm going to put Darth Vader standing on a street corner holding up a sign that says and i'll put quotation mark the end is near all right so we got this image here and man look at the quality of this i'm zoomed in so close and it looks so clean man i think this is really what people were expecting when sd3 came out and they were very disappointed with the results it was giving. And like I said earlier, a lot of people think this is gonna be competition for Mid Journey. And uh, let's try something even more complex than that. On the left, Darth Vader holding a sign that says the, the end is near. On the right, Luke Skywalker holding a sign that says there is still hope. <laughs> okay, so um doesn't really look like Luke Skywalker, but it does look like something a, a Jedi would wear or something that Luke Skywalker would wear. And they're both holding up signs and there's, they say exactly what I asked it to say. This is like extremely impressive. And, and then I want to recommend something to you guys uh, from this person that goes by Angry Penguin. He created this uh, Flux Prompt Enhancer, meaning you could put in something very basic here and it's going to create a really nice prompt for you. And you can even put a style here. So for example, let me put um, the Hulk driving a convertible. And we want this to be in the style of manga. I misspelled convertible. So in the style of manga, run this glyph. Let's see what it gives us. And it says the Hulk muscles bulging, grips a sleek convertible steering wheel, went tossling his green hair, manga style action lines, emphasize speed, cityscapes blur. Like this is, this is so good. If you just can't think of a prompt and you just want something super fast, this is great. I'll put a link in the description for this so that you can also use it. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to copy that by just pressing here, copy, and let's just dump it into the prompt and see what it gives us. And look, it's this masterpiece, man. This is beautiful. I mean, I mean, look at this. This is so good, man. I mean, I can't praise it enough. It's just amazing. And also you can do image to image. Of course, we don't have control nets or IP adapters for this yet, but you can still use image to image if you play around with the denoising. Here, Kamenduro gave us a workflow so that we can do image to image. Uh, I will include that in the description. So here I put an image of Logan and let's see what it gives us. And look at this beauty. Look at this. Look at how clean this looks. I'm like, I'm zooming in. Obviously you're getting pixels because no matter what image you have, how if you zoom in enough, you're gonna get pixels. But this just looks so clean, man. So yeah, you can do image to image like this. You just gotta play around with the denoising. Here I have it at, uh, 0 0.7 this specific workflow you will have to play around with the image scale down like try to find out what the size of the image is the resolution and then if it's really high then you know if it's like 2000 pixels then just bring this down to like 0 0.5 or something um, if it's really small then bring it up this is pretty much what how it's going to generate it so if you put one it's going to generate the exact size of the uh, original image uh, right here. We'll have to play around with this, but you don't have to do it this one. If you want to give it a, the exact numbers, I also have these notes here. So you can just put this into image and then bring this down here. And then you can put exact numbers here. So you have options. All right. Um, but yeah, I got to say that I am excited. I am so excited for control nets to be introduced to this. I'm so excited for AP adapters. I'm so excited for if we can start generating videos with this. I, I, you know, I hope it's not the same with Excel where it wasn't doing so good with videos because of the way certain things were trained. I just really hope that this is going to work well with videos. If I can get this quality images into video to video, it's over, man. We're going to get some crazy looking visuals. If we can get some consistency in this quality, it's going to be insane. So what do you guys think? Should Mid Journey be worried? It's always a matter of time before 
the king gets dethroned. I will make updates to this because I'm sure we're going to get updates. There are people at this moment developing ways to improve this. So there are going to probably be some more videos in the future of me talking about this and as advancements are happening. So look forward to that. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like always, take care and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.